Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining another Cyber Thursday session here at Tech Horizon UK. My name is Gabriel Malman, and I'm the Business Development Manager. Uh, and today we'll be talking about security awareness trainers with very exciting today with leaders in the marketing know before. This session will be recorded in case you want to check it again later. And also at the end of the webinar, you're gonna have chances to ask questions. So uh, make sure you put them on the right side and I'll make sure to ask them to, to the person and even us uh, to try to answer the best as we can. So today, very exciting day because we have with us uh, channel manager of Know Before, Oli Peach, who will be who will be talking about further about the importance of keeping your users trained against cyber threats and also show more detail about the security awareness leader Know Before. So very exciting as mentioned. Uh, so let's pass it today to Oli. Oli, can you hear me? All right, sir. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Gabriel. Um, yeah, hello yes. everyone. Uh, please, all yours, uh, Oli. Okay. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, thanks everyone for, for joining today. Um, as I say, we'll, we'll have a look um, at the, the Know Before um, platform um, and also just I'll run through, um, you know, the importance of security awareness training, uh, especially in a, in a time like we're in now. Um, but yeah, I think it's very important um, for us. And, and yeah, thank you to Tech Horizon for, for joining with me and, and asking me to come on um, today. So, you know, Know Before, um, who are we? Um, you know, we are the world's largest integrated security awareness training platform um, combined with um, phishing um, simulations. Now, we have over 30,000 customers um, worldwide. Um, that is about um, 12 million users of our platform um, globally. And as you can see here, um, our, the problem of, um, you know, phishing, the problem of social engineering is, is not sector specific. Um, we cover a right range of the markets. Um, from all users, um, you know, from, you know, one to five, all the way up to, you know, hundreds of thousands of users um, globally with, with our platform um, to, to help this ongoing problem. Uh, as, uh, as Gabriel mentioned at the beginning, you know, we are Gartner leading. Um, we are um, in the magic quadrant, um, as you can see here, um, we're in the top right-hand corner um, for our service and excellence um, in this division. Um, and we're very proud um, of, of that um, achievement. So. Look, you know, what we're we talking about today, um, obviously what we're going to show you a little bit with the platform that we can achieve um, later. But, you know, fundamentally, you know, people are, you know, the critical layer um, within your security program. And we bounce around it a lot, um, but we call ourselves, um, you know, the human firewall uh, specifically for, um, you know, that, that reason. Now, why do we do that? Why, why do we have, um, you know, a platform like ourselves? Well, you know, the facts are, are the facts, you know, 91% of breaches, um, you know, are happening and still happening um, with a spear phishing um, attack. Um, CEO fraud um, is, is on the rise, um, and especially, unfortunately, during this time, um, during COVID, um, you know, phishing emails have gone up um, by around about 660%. Um, CEO fraud um, is a massive part of that as well. Um, as long as, as well as you know, accounts forms and HR, um, you know, scams um, along those sides. And as I say, you know, ransomware um, is predicted to cost more than 20 billion um, by 2021. So, you know, unfortunately, this stuff isn't going away. Um, even with a global pandemic, um, you know, phishing emails still on the rise, which is um, it's actually a really sad thing to think about. Um, you know, in, in a crisis that we're in, that people are taking advantage um, of the situation. So, you know, just looking at, you know, phishing being the, you know, number one threat factor, you know, phishing and, and malware um, are still, um, you know, organizations that, that were phished. Um, you know, you've got to be looking, um, you know, at virus worms and malware in here, but these are just some really interesting statistics um, just to, to understand that actually, you know, outside of threats um, is still, um, you know, a, a main part that's coming in. Um, trusted sources is still out there as well. You know, things like um, if your domains are spoofed or unfortunately if someone um, does actually get into your credentials, um, you know, changing or rerouting some of the emails that are being um, sent out um, as, as well. Um, but yeah, as I say, you know, 
phishing is still that number one threat factor um, and it's still something that we just need to be, be aware of um, in here as well. Um, so this is actually taken from Microsoft. Um, I was, unfortunately, I thought I had the updated version on here, but it looks like I have the older one. But, you know, in, in percentage of emails coming out, um, you know, is an increase and, and it still is increasing, um, even with the figures um, from, from last year. Um, and as you say, you know, we all know that Microsoft control and Office 365 controls, you know, I think it's about 90% um, of the market. And it just shows that, you know, phishing emails are still getting through their perimeters. It's still getting through, um, you know, the likes um, of, you know, your, your proof points, Mimecast, you know, whoever they are out there, you know, are, if these emails are still getting through. And, and this is the point of our platform is that, you know, when those emails do get through, we can then, you know, act, we can then help um, by educating staff, uh, by sending them phishing tests, um, just to keep them um, engaged. Now, th this is a really interesting statistic. Um, you know, 54, so nearly 55% um, of phishing emails clicked um, is under 60 minutes. Now, it's, it's a really interesting, you know, point to that because I would actually say that I, you know, quite like to see the stat for it being clicked within five minutes because a lot of people, I would say, you know, click on phishing emails, not only because maybe they don't know what the email is, but actually maybe because they're rushed, maybe they're doing something. Um, but by, you know, testing individuals and by also creating just little helpful hints and tips of what to look out for, they can then educate themselves. And as I say, hopefully will not click um, on these emails um, that, that have, been, have been sent through. Right. So. You know, CEO fraud, lots of people talk about it. Um, you know, lots of people, you know, might understand it, some, some may not, but it just it outlines here of, of what, you know, what happens and, and how it impacts um, you as a business. So, you know, look at this start, you know, the attacker, um, you know, spoofs the domain, you know, most times out of 10, they'll finish the signature off with from a CEO or, you know, their name with, with a spoofed um, domain. Um, then they're obviously ob asking for something to do very quickly, or there's some urgency, um, or you know, asking people to to pay stuff, um, you know, you know, in in a timely manner. Um, you know, I was just speaking to um, a company a couple of weeks ago where a, a new member of the accounts team um, actually suffered um, this, and they ended up sending um, you know a couple of thousand pounds over a week period where um, they were impersonating the CEO. They were asking for small amounts of money, 200 pounds here, 100 pounds here. Um, but because of the staff member was new and it was coming from the CEO, she wanted to you know, act quickly. She wanted to do what he said, but actually the email wasn't coming from him. I mean, it was, it was a spoof domain. And, and, that, and that's really the damage you know, out, out of this is, you know, is, is money that can be sent out of it. You know, unfortunately, if it's larger amounts of money and how the investigations turned out, it could actually increase in, you know, being the CEO fired, the CFO fired. But actually, what it what this probably will do if it ever happens um, in the businesses, it will probably make you look at policies and procedures that tie quite nicely um, into this. But then for you to understand and for you to help, um, you know, your people and help build, um, you know, that human firewall um, out the back of it. And you know what to do in that situation, you know, you speak to people. If you are not meant to be receiving or if you think you're receiving something from the CEO, just check, just check with them, you know, give them a call, um, you know, drop them an instant message, just double check or even speak to a manager to say, look, is this email, do I need to, do I need to send it? And that's exactly, you know, parts of the training and educating, um, you know, that, that we're looking at. And, you know, the human firewall is is definitely a part of the, the modern security stack. OK, so when we obviously talk about security stacks, we're talking about everything, you know, from your firewalls to your endpoint protection and actually having your people um, trained, um, you know, having them educated um, is definitely part of this stack. And the more obvious ways is things like, um, you know, Cyber Essentials Plus, ISO 27001. GDPR, you know, all these compliance modules now are asking, you know, are you training your staff and, and are you educating them? Um, and that's, you know, fundamentally what we want to see out there is we want to see people trained and we want to see um, people educated in, in how that works.
So, you know, again, going back to how we can protect people is, you know, internet dangers, you know, again, malicious links, um, spear phishing. Um, what also, you know, that that is that full sense of security is that, you know, a lot of people think, oh, because of my company has the best products out there or they have the best antivirus, you know, it's not going to affect me when actually it, it does. And, and people need to just take um, a little bit more onus on themselves, understand, you know, the, the potential, um, you know, damages that it could cause. Um, and yeah, you know, look um, at what's um, going on um, uh, personally, as well as um, from a business um, line as well. So look, you know, we can run a baseline test. So a baseline test um, is effectively what we call our fish prone percentage. Okay, so you can test your users, you can see how they get on um, from sending out um, a spoof, a phishing test, whether that's spoofed, whether that's you know, something that looks like Amazon. Um, I'll show you a little bit um, what we can do a little bit later on. Um, and then you train your employees. So you, you either train them, um, or sorry, you do it combinedly, you train them on a regular basis, but also you train any of the remediational, um, you know, training. So if someone clicks on a phishing link, we can send them training on, on that. Um, and then obviously we can see those results. So we go around um, in a circular motion um, from there as well. So you know, how, how are we different and, and how do we, you know, uh, add our training um, to your platform? Well, you know, we want to make it fun. We want to make it engaging. Um, a lot of our, um, you know, programs and a lot of our training, you know, are comedy sketches or they add um, a bit of emotion so that you're brought into characters and, and you're educated on topics that some people might not find that that interesting. So if we can keep it engaging and then we can keep, um, you know, everything um, interested and, and then people, um, you know, will and train more and want to train uh, more as, as well. And also, you know, regularly, you know, we, we want to train, um, you know, people regularly um, and we want to, um, you know, keep them um, educated um, from that side of things. So, you know, what, what do we say here is that, you know, awareness training by itself, um, you know, how, how can you test people um, or how do you know if anything's working if you're not testing um, the results? So that's exactly why we bring the, the simulated phishing test involved with it as well. Um, you know, we bring it involved so that, um, you know, that the test can see what, you know, people are failing on, but also we can fundamentally train them on areas that they might need to improve. So, you know, if we do that um, consistently, if we do it, so we train and we and recommend on, on a monthly basis, we then, you know, recommend training um, on a regular um, basis again. And then today um, and every day, um, it will increase um, that efficiency here. Now, you know, running those baseline tests, just to show you an example here, and this is um, some actual data, and I'll show you these graphs in a second in, in our platform. Um, but you know, you, you can't um, you can't manage um, what you don't measure is, is a big point out here. So you know, if you don't know how your employees are, if you don't know who's reacting to what, or potentially or clicking or what, um, yeah, that's exactly what we're getting out of here. And you you know, we want to find that fish prone percentage, um, you know, from here. So. A big question and, and something that's asked quite a lot um, here is, um, you know, do, oh, I just need to train management or I just need to train, you know, um, the accounts team. Or actually, you know, everyone um, can be and everyone is targeted, um, you know, with a phishing attempt or a spam or a spear phishing um, attempt from here. So, you know, we will always recommend and we would always say to train um, all your employees, um, you know, on a regular basis, um, as as often as you see fit. As I say, we recommend uh, monthly, um, and we recommend um, that you train at least quarterly, and here as well. So what we might find is that people would train, you know, departments on a quarter basis, and then also train all of your users on a quarterly basis um, as well. Um, and then obviously at the back of this um, as well, you can test those results, test anyone that's failed. Um, or, you know, clicked on a link. Um, but then also out the back of this is, you know, make it regular. And, th and that's the big thing, um, you know, that we're trying to say here is, is, you know, make it regular, make it consistent and actually set up a, a plan 
or a 12 month training plan um, yeah, from now. Um, or, um, as I say, we, we can work with you um, to, you know, think, add training modules like, you know, creating strong passwords or GDPR. Um, again, we can work on things like that. Now, we have a really good Forrester's report on a return of investment. Um, I can share this um, and the Technorizen guys have this. So, you know, if anyone wants a copy of this, um, you know, to add or to um, send upwards, you know, we have a really good um, return of investment. Um, and again, you know, we're really good analytics that we've done to create this test um, and worked um, with Foresters to, to achieve that. And then just lastly here, just to show you, you know, that our, that our tests and, and our platform works. So if you look at this here, you know, say let's run a test out of 100 people, you know, still 37% of people are still clicking um, on a first test. After that, um, we can see after we're training them, educating them this goes down to around about 14 percent um, and then after a year it goes down to um, around about four now we do have this sector specific and we do have it on the uk and i market as well um, you know if you should want um, you know any of this um, bits of information um, sent over um, to anyone so what i'm going to do now um, i'm just going to go um, into um, the platform here um, and show you it um, ourselves. Um, I hope you can you can see this um, all all right um, and everything um, in here. So we are um, obviously we are software um, as a service. Okay, um, we are licensed um, on a per user um, basis. Now what we have um, in here um, is our dashboard and um, where we can where we can see everything. So now this is what an administrator of the platform um, would see. And just some little high level high level overviews that, that we can have um, here as well. Um, if we go um, into our user tab, um, just to point out, we have an Active Directory synchronization. And um, this Active Directory synchronization is a one way push um, yeah, from your Active Directory um, into um, our platform. And the good thing um, about this is, um, is that it will keep everyone synchronized. It will move people into groups. Um, and it will keep um, everyone, um, yeah, say they move from, you know, IT to sales, sales to wherever. Um, yeah, this will all keep them quite nicely um, in here as, as well. Now, the good thing about setting up groups is not only obviously can we train people um, on a group level, so maybe we want to send something, you know, over to the accounts team or, or maybe um, into the marketing team or management, wherever um, we would want to send um, those people um, to. Again, you know, we can train those, um, we can send specific phishing um, targets to them as well. So as I say, we can get quite granular with this. We can train everyone um, all the same, um, or um, again, we can train and target um, individuals um, as well. From a user perspective, and again, this is where um, this comes back to um, our compliance modules um, and everything that we have in here. I'm just gonna show you Fritz's portal. So we have the ability here to see people's personal risk scores, and this looks at their factors and their things like their training, their behavior, you know, their job function and their exposure um, to the internet as well. So we gather this information, we give that person a personal risk score, and actually that relates back to the console for a group risk scoring um, and um, a whole company-wide um, risk score um, as well. But from an individual basis, we can see um, exactly what emails um, they've clicked on, um, you know, what emails and what campaigns they've done. Um, so we've seen that they've passed their training in here. But actually, we have a full event timeline um, of exactly what's going on. Now, what's really handy, obviously, about this is if you're ever audited, ever need to provide any information about security awareness or you know, understanding you know what's going on um yeah then we have everything in here um you know ready and um, for anyone to see um, and to provide that evidence um for as well okay. so look that that's that's the users tab and um, I'll, I'll go into our mod store now and then talk about our training and talk about the education um part of, of our platform so the reason why um, No Before is so popular, um, again, a, a topical reason of why a lot of people use us is the fact of um, with our full subscription model, we have over a thousand pieces of content in here. So when I say pieces of content, that ranges everything from training modules, games, 
uh, video modules, newsletters, posters and artwork um, and assessments um, as well. And we keep things up to date. You know, look, everyone's working from home at the moment. We can see in here all of we've added recently working from home modules. And actually we have um, Twist and Shout have recently just added a module into here um, from Restricted Intelligence. Um, it's, it's part of our comedy series. It's a sketch show. And the good thing about this is, and this episode in particular, is it's actually shot completely from Zoom. So they ran this during COVID and they shot, um, you know, this actual training module. And it shows examples of, you know, how people are working from home. You know, there's kids running into the background with important documents that they've, you know, put paint on. But actually a part of the series here is that someone again has transferred money or actually someone's let them log in and that they've pretended to be IT um, and yeah, given away passwords and given away and some credentials there as well. And again, it's just that whole thing of you're working at home. Things are different. People aren't used to it. Um, and yeah, understanding how you know hackers can manipulate that situation um, to, to, to kind of get in and gain access. So it's a really good module that we've released there. It's a bit lighthearted. It's fun, but it keeps people um, engaged and um, from that aspect as well. Um, now, the Inside Man um, is something that we're very proud of here at New Before. Um, this is a, um, again, it's run by Twist and Shout Media. They're a part that are a No Before company. Now, we actually won a film festival award um, for this recently, um, not even around security, is around the production um, of this. Now, um, it's real life actors, um, you know, it's a real life um, shot. We are, um, as cheesy as it sounds, um, trying to be a bit like Netflix with this. Um, you know, because if we want to keep people engaged, you know, if people aren't, you know, potentially interested in IT, they don't really maybe understand it that much. Well, we've put a little mini series here. This is season two. And because if you're bought in on, you know, the people, um, there's a plot, there's a twist, there's a bad guy. Um, but, you know, each episode has about three or five points around security awareness um, and what to look out for. So it's, it's a really good way of educating staff but keeping them entertained um, at the same time um, as well. Now we have obviously lots of modules in here and um, everything from you know creating a strong password, security fundamentals, um, but also we have things like monthly training and quarterly training that we can recommend um, for you as well. And um, we have um, added to the platform most recently brandable content so you're actually able to um, allow your branding uh, to be added to the beginning um, of our training um, and then um, also a little slide or a message at the end, maybe even saying something like, you know, please speak to, you know, the, T the IT team if you have any questions or if we can help at all from any of the training um, that you've seen. So you can add things like that um, on there as well. Um, but also we have the ability to upload your own content. So we then become a full learning and management system. As long as it's SCORM compliant um, or it's MP4, you can add it into the platform you can then, you know, create training and send training out, use our platform to do that. Um, and then it allows um, yeah, your users um, maybe when they join the company, they can have some um, security awareness training and a message from the CEO and maybe something like a HR module that you can all run from our mod store um, and have people um, interlink, um, you know, from there as well. And just to show you what training um, actually looks like and um, from a user's perspective. So, we can come in here, we can see, um, you know, this is Aaron's account um, that I've got here. I can see exactly what training that I need to start. Um, and I can also see um, what training that I have completed um, here down at the bottom. So we can see everything from a user's perspective. I mean, it's really handy. It's really easy. They have just one login and they can come in and do what they need to do. Uh, we also have things like leaderboards. So you can run um, in department and um, competitions, you know, maybe like sales versus accounts or north versus south, whatever you'd want to do. And what you have the ability here of, you know, maybe running little competitions that first, um, you know, bit of the company or first group um, to complete their training and they get a free lunch or they get some Amazon vouchers or, or something along those lines. So, again, we can run things here that can be quite competitive. Um, should your organization like and should um, there be a bit of competition um, in there um, as well. 
So just going back to, to the mod store and, and the last point I just want to touch on from training um, is actually something um, which is our assessments. OK, so we have um, a culture um, assessment um, and we also have um, a security awareness, um, you know, proficiency assessment here as well. So they are exactly what they are. You know, they are surveys to be sent out to the end users. They will have questions to answer around about 30, um, I believe, um, with both of them. But the good thing that we get out of this is we're actually able to see results and see potential weaknesses in the business. So I've sent out my questionnaire and these are the results I've got back. You know, I've got a quite a low score on social media and how people react um, if they receive a phishing email on that. But actually, you know, Internet use, email security is quite high. You know, people have answered questions on that. That's great. It's, it's a really good way for us to understand exactly what's going on. But because social media scored low, I'm probably going to click on my tab here. This then takes me to the mod store and then will provide me with all of our modules around, um, you know, uh, social media. Um, and here's probably quite a good one to send out. It's eight minutes long um, and it's, it's a good module you know, around WhatsApp, Facebook and, and all of the rest. So not only does this assessment provide you with information back um, to modules and training that you can do, but also um, it provides you, um, you know, information and a score on how the company is doing. We can obviously look at that and maybe run this test on like a six monthly or a yearly basis just to check our results. And I would say hopefully they're on the way up and, and all in the green um, by the end of it as well. So that that's everything, um, you know, on training. Um, you know, if anyone wants to see any previews of our mod store or any of our content, again, please get in touch um, with the, the TechnoRizon guys. Um, there'll be an email at the end of the webinar um, just to show you exactly who to get in contact with. So I'm just going to get onto the testing side of things now. We, we do have USB testing. So um, as long as your ports are open, it's basically a beaconized file. You can drop it and USBs will then be, um, you know, you can open them. It will be sent back to us. We can then understand who's opened it and who's failed. And then from there, we can again provide them with training and educate them around not to pick up USBs um, off the floor. Now, we also have vishing. So vishing is voicemail phishing. We have variations of templates in here, both male and female. Um, and again, we, we can action things and maybe ask people to perform a command. And the good thing about this is, is that if we do this and if we send it to them, so I'm just going to preview this one here. The revenue office calling you with an automated message. There is a problem with your P60 form and we need to verify your national insurance number to generate a new P60 for you. So basically what we're trying to see here is we're trying to see if people, um, you know, click or people respond to that message um, that's come in. Now, if people do, then, yeah, fundamentally at the back of it, they would fail that test. And again, we can provide them with training and educate them why it's important not to pick up, um, you know, a phone or why it's not important to reply to a message. Uh, Vishing was reported on the rise at about 350 um, percent in 2019 alone. Um, and it's a really common way for people to gain access by social engineering accounts teams or whoever um, that is um, yeah, in, in their departments. So, yeah, definitely one to look out for. And definitely good tests um, to be running um, there as well. And then obviously we have phishing, you know, again, a very common way, very you know, topical at the moment. Um, you know, we have lots of variations of templates and um, that's available on here. So, for example, you know, we keep up to date. Um, you know, a prime example um, that, you know, Zoom um, is one of the biggest um, rises ever since COVID happened. Um, you know, their spike of usage um, has been uh, amazing um, for them. But also, obviously, at the back of that, you've had lots of people spoofing their domains um, or trying to um, like this one here. Um, it looks really generic. But the big thing out of this email that I would say is, well, one, the domain's not right. Two, I don't know who Malcolm Barnes is. And three, when I hover over this link here, it's clearly not going to take me to Zoom, but I'm going to click on it anyway. And this preview here, you know, it sends you um, to our landing page. It gives you reasons of, of why, you know, stop, you know, think about it um, and check um, the email before you send it. Now, the good thing about this is we can change all of this information. We can change everything in here. We can add company logos. I mean, it's really um, quite easy um, to do that um, as well. Now, we can send emails out. 
and, and we can obviously spoof um, lots of domains. Um, but obviously, Microsoft again is is quite a big one. Oh, there we go. Um, it's quite a big one here. Um, that is obviously spoofed quite oftenly, um, and obviously we get quite a few emails um, sent from them as well. But what I'm just going to show you here is we can go um, that next step further. So, you know, I've got, oh, sorry, I clicked on the wrong one. Um, I've got my email here, it's Office 365. Um, as we can see here, um, you know, we've got an Office 365 login and we have um, the information here. If I was to press send again, you can see here that it's taken me to a spoof landing page. If I was to enter any credentials in here at all and press next and then sign in, I've then failed that test, not only because of I've given away my credentials, but actually I've given and I've clicked um, on the link here as well. So you can fail a test by doing that. You can fail a test by opening an attachment um, and also you can fail a test by replying um, to an email as well. Now we can send emails out, um, you know, we can send emails out to obviously those landing pages, but also we have um, error pages. So you can send them um, and for staff, they might not even realize that they've clicked on a test. So we can send them to a 404 page here and we can obviously change the HTTPS information um, that we have here as well. Um, and we also have things like um, this instant training. So I'll just show you this one here. This one takes you straight um, to a landing page. We can see here, oops, you know, I've clicked on that phishing test. But what that user can then do is hover over here and see exactly where they went wrong, you know, find out information um, of why they shouldn't have clicked on that test. And then it's a really good way for them to learn and understand instantly, you know, why they shouldn't um, have done that. And, and then just lastly, obviously we have our campaigns, they're sent out, all of our emails can be randomized um, at times, days, we can also randomize the emails that have been sent out. Um, so you might have someone that sits next to each other and not gonna receive the same email at the same time, it's gonna be completely randomized and from that aspect as well. Failures in the first hour, failures by day, but actually, you know, we can deep dive in and see exactly how people have failed. We can even see, so if people have clicked, we can see browser versions and operating systems as well. So a good point to say here is if people are failing on mobile devices, well, let's train them and let's send them some training on mobile devices and how to spot um, a phishing email from there as well. As I say, you know, look, five people have opened an attachment, eight people have entered data, um, and then, right here five people have reported it so we have a button it's called our fish alert button um oh it's a bit too big and there we go we can then see here um exactly um and we can add policies into when we receive a phishing email so when i receive a phishing email i'm going to click on this link here and i'm going to click it out here and as a user i've done the right thing because i've seen a phishing email and i've clicked on this fish alert button now if um, it is a simulated test um, by run, uh, yeah, by you guys. And then we get a little congratulations message. Well done, this was a simulated test and it's deleted from their inbox, so don't worry about it. If it's a non-simulated test, they still get a message. It says, thank you for reporting this. The message will still be deleted um, from that user's inbox, but then it will actually go um, to an IT inbox of your choice um, for them for you to monitor um, and, and have a look over. So it's a really nice way to add policies and procedures into what happens when you get a phishing email rather than people just sending it everywhere and to, to anyone that they have as well. And then lastly, just to show you here, you know, we've got everything um, from dashboards, we've got, you know, phishing uh, reports, and we can even see how many fish alerts have been reported here. But we've got over 60 different reports that are available, um, you know, for anyone to use, anyone um, to see. Um, and we have a full reports um, tab at the back of that um, as well. Um, and that everyone is is actually um, yeah a high level overview um, of of Nova Four. So uh, let me just go back to it here, um, and um, yeah I'll pass over to to Gabriel just to see and um, yeah if we if we have um, if we have any questions. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks so much for everything. Uh, very ex very. Uh important information and yeah as i mentioned uh, let's check if you have any questions i can see there's some questions already being uh, posted here let's just give a few more uh, seconds for people to to post it uh, questions uh, cool so uh let's just go with the questions we have uh, 
four so far. So, uh, Oli, the first question that I can see here is uh, how is no before license and what subscription levels do do you provide? Uh, we can also uh, help out with this in terms of uh, if you need any information regarding that, you can email us at cyber uh, cyberinquires at technorizinggroup.com. But Oli, please, if you want to add anything, please uh, go ahead. Yeah, ab absolutely. So um, we, we're licensed um, on a per user model. Um, so we call a user um, an email address. Um, so we are licensed um, on that level. Um, we do have four subscription levels um, ranging from um, phishing um, only um, right the way up um, to our diamond content, um, which has our um, full a package on um again you know if you do want any pricing or, or want to speak to the technorizing guys um yeah please ask them and um, they will be able to provide some pricing um around those those figures um, and also um our subscription levels what they include we have a really good pdf on on how to show that as well so yeah please get in touch with us and um, for that perfect perfect uh, another another thing that i can see here in terms of questions as you know uh many many companies have offices in different regions and countries that speak different languages. So one of the questions that I have here from one of the attendees is, uh, how about uh, languages? Are we able, for example, to use no before platform in the UK and another one, for example, in China with uh, another language? That's just uh, things that uh, could be uh, very handy for uh, international business. Yeah, ab ab absolutely. Um, so Basically, yeah, what, what we're able um, to do um, and what we have is um, we have actually over 35 different languages on our platform, um, not only from a, a, a training perspective, but also from phishing as well. Um, yeah, we cover, you know, a, a lot of languages in there. Um, so, yeah, you know, if, if you have specific language requirements, again, please reach out to us. We'll be able to let you know exactly what's on there. Um, and the variety of training that we have available. Um, obviously, from a phishing standpoint as well, we have lots of emails, but what's really good about our platform is you can create emails from scratch as well. So if you do see emails in a local language um, that you want to add on, they're really easy to add up and upload yourselves, or obviously we have, um, yeah, I mean, we've got over 5,000 templates across all languages in there. Um, I'm sure, again, um, you know, you could even copy and, and translate some of them um, in there. But yeah, we do have some really good um, templates that are pre-aligned on the platform in, in individual languages as well. Great, really good, really good. Uh, and also, how about, uh, can it know before integrate with our email clients, such as Outlook, for example, to warn when uh, there's a possibility of phishing email, for example? Are we able yeah. to do that? Absolutely. So that, that's what that fish alert button um, was that I showed them at the end. Um, yeah, into, integrates with Outlook, um, yeah, uh, uh, Gmail. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a really good way, as I say, to adding your policies and procedures um, into um, reporting phishing emails. And it says it stops people sending them everywhere. Um, so yeah, it's a really good add-on and it is completely free um, as well. So um, yeah, that's something that's great. Okay. And uh, as we know, uh, mentioned before, I, I, I know that people, uh, I share with the attendees also that know before it's been uh, for the past uh, two or three years, concept, consecutive a leader in Gartner security awareness training. So that's really cool. One. But I can see here that's another, another attendee is asking, uh, what is the differentiation between know before and other solutions in the market? Apart yeah. from being the leader, is there anything else you'd like to add from us? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and that, that boils down to the, the, I believe, the content that we have. Um, we're, we're very different in the way we provide content into the platform. So we're not a one single plain glass. We don't have one um, development team that are just creating content. We actually have over 10 um, teams um, from all around the world creating different content for different needs. Um, and that also then brings great variety to you guys as end users. So, you know, one minute you might be having a game, the next minute you might have a, a video module. You might then use one of our series. You might have something funny, but then you might bring it down and have something a bit more serious with a quiz. So, you know, our, our training and our education is not only is it fun and it also engaging, um, but actually because it's done by different providers, it's not the same, it's not boring, and we don't want people to get bored. Um, we also obviously target on smaller um, time frames as well because we want people to be engaged on a regular basis, but maybe for just a short amount of time. So five minutes here, 10 minutes there to run a training session 
is a lot easier than doing, you know, a full classroom for a day and, and, and whatever. And then obviously, you know, with the languages and also, um, you know, with our fishing, we, we have the largest amount of fishing templates. I mean, we've got over 5,000, as mentioned before. So the platform is really easy to use because if we fundamentally got a lot of it already built in there for you. And you don't have to do anything and there's also lots of automation in the platform as well so um yeah but as i say if anyone wants a kind of more of a one-to-one -one demo or wants to speak um you know about pricing or anything like that you know please um, yeah please just give us a shout and, and we'll be uh, we'll be really happy to help yeah definitely uh that's one of the main main topics of a security awareness uh, training is to have something that's not boring and uh on on the side of no before uh, we are aware with the uh, inside man, uh, also uh, big content and uh, all the very uh, playful and enjoyable engagement content that know before has. This is something that we always seen also from the customers on your side, on our side that we sell know before, and they always said that it's very entertaining and comparing with other solutions that are, uh, sorry for saying that, boring at the end of the day. Something that you mm -hmm. have to to do to engage with your users and make them. Uh, learn and be aware of uh, cyber threats. So yeah, definitely know before is the solution to go for if you're looking for security awareness training. So if you want to, by any chance, as also Ali mentioned, if you want to try it out, a uh, one-on-one -on -one demo or any other further information about know before, please email us at cyberinquires at technorizinggroup.com and we'll be able to sort that out for you. I uh, just want to thank you again, Oli, for uh, everything that you've done today, presenting all before, and helping everyone here to be more secure while working remotely and being aware of, for example, phishing emails and other cyber threats. So really appreciate uh, you coming today. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I think uh, the next, uh, don't please don't miss our next session next Thursday, where we'll be covering uh, Bayshore, which is IoT security, so for industrial uh, security. Uh, same time. Uh, see you. See you next week. And thanks so much again, Oli. Uh, stay safe, everyone, and have a lovely rest of the week. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Stay safe. Thank you. Yeah.